Follicular lymphoma is the most common slow-growing lymphoma we see in patients in the U.S. Um, it's named for the way it looks under the microscope. You see what are called follicles or these round areas. It's an older term. And it's a disease that um, people can live with for many years and may not need treatment. Uh, uh, so it's one that we see quite commonly. So oftentimes, follicular lymphoma is actually identified initially when patients have scans for another reason. So, you know, gallbladder pain, someone gets an abdominal CT scan and we find some lymph nodes in the abdomen or, or a patient's in an accident and has a CAT scan for some reason uh, and we identify lymph nodes. Another way would be going to see your physician and noting on physical exam that there's some enlarged lymph nodes or sometimes patients will notice this. Those, those would be the most common ways that uh, we would see a patient presenting with follicular lymphoma. Having fevers, drenching night sweats, unexplained weight loss, those are quite uncommon in follicular lymphoma unless patients have you know, a significant burden of disease, so we see those less commonly. The diagnosis, like with any lymphoma, is based on uh, getting a piece of tissue, be it a core needle biopsy or a surgical-based biopsy so that we have enough material to send to our pathologists who look under the microscope. They look at the individual cells, the pattern of those cells, and then they do special stains to highlight proteins on and in the tumor cells, and then they come back to us with a diagnosis. Sometimes we'll use immunotherapy alone in a drug called rituximab, binds to the lymphoma cells and tags those cells for destruction by your own immune system. Uh, generally, we will combine that with a chemotherapy drug, but in some situations we'll use rituximab alone. Rituximab can be combined with a drug called bendamustine. Uh, sometimes there's a different antibody, not rituximab, but obinutuzumab that may be used. Those are sort of standard treatments. If patients have disease that needs treatment and there's only one area, um, or patients who present with what we call stage one disease, one lymph node area that can be radiated, sometimes we'll use radiation in that setting. So we have a number of really active uh, options for patients with relapse or refractory disease. For patients in in the second line or who had one prior line of treatment, we often use a drug called lenalidomide in combination with rituximab. There was a recent study that showed adding a drug called tafacitimab, a monoclonal antibody, is a benefit in that setting. Um, beyond that, we're using a lot of what we call bispecific antibodies. So these, these um, are an immunotherapy approach. They bind to the lymphoma cells and on the other end bind to immune cells and cause destruction of the follicular lymphoma cells. We also use CAR T cell therapy in certain situations. So we have a lot of very good, very active treatments for people whose disease has recurred. Yeah, there are a lot of uh, new treatments in, uh, in clinical trials combining these agents. So combining a bispecific with rituximab and maybe a drug like uh, Xanabrutinib or a BTK inhibitor. There are drugs called EZH2 inhibitors, uh, a drug called Tazimidostat, adding that to other treatments. So we're trying to find what are the best combinations. I think the thing to remember in follicular lymphoma is that patients often live with this disease for many years before they need treatment, and patients have a very long overall survival. So we don't necessarily need to jump to treat people right away, and we can sort of look at what are the good options, when is the appropriate time to treat somebody. Yes, yeah, so this is, this is when we're following patients closely who we don't think actually need treatment because we have data to show whether you treat someone as soon as you meet them or you treat them when the disease is on the move and you think they need treatment, that people live the same amount of time and that generally that's a very long period of time. So we generally see people in the, in the clinic, we do physical exams, we ask about symptoms, that's the most important part. Laboratory studies we generally get, those can be helpful in some situations, really not as much as are you having symptoms and what does your physical exam look like. And then we may periodically get scans, um, either CT scans or PET scans to look for areas that can't be appreciated on exam. We try not to do lots and lots of scans um, because there is a radiation exposure and what we're really looking for is 
what, you know, what the symptoms are and uh, you know, overall how people are doing. So it depends on when the diagnosis was made. So if you have a patient or someone who's been treated and is in remission or someone who's been followed for, you know, when we first meet people, we usually follow them every three to four months. And then if people are stable, we go to six months. I have some patients who've been in remission for years. We see them once a year or as needed. So it's really tailored to, does the patient have active lymphoma? How long has this disease been sort of quiescent or is it on the move? It's on the move and you think someone may be needing treatment in the near future, you might see someone more often, like every three months. But we really individualize it to the patient, not only what, what we're looking for, but what is the patient comfortable with. Some patients early on are you know, understandably quite anxious, so we may see someone more frequently initially to say, okay, everything's going well, here's what to look for, here's what to reach out for.